I'm Robin Ward. I'm the Executive Director of Alumni and Parent Engagement. I'm so happy to be with you tonight. And uh, maybe we'll get this group under control. I can tell we're ready to have fun. Um, this is a double header. And um, we are launching it with Noreen Hagopian and her um, fairly new company, Dreamboards. And um, I'm going to work right alongside her. I've got my cutting board. I have my charcuterie um, makings. And it's only been within the last couple of months that I've really learned how to pronounce that word. So anyway, welcome everyone. Let me introduce to you to Noreen and she will take it from there. She's class of 15, as you can see from the screen. She will graduate next Thursday with her MBA class of 2021. Um, she is a, um, a visionary when it comes to creating food and she got this from her family and she's gonna tell us a little bit about that. She created her company Dream Boards out of a vision to bring people together. So tonight we're bringing people together virtually. It's not quite the same. Maybe we'll do this in person soon. Um, we wanna en enjoy the memories. We wanna enjoy the food. Um, later, we're gonna enjoy some wine. Um, and, and remember, this is a, a business for, Nor for Noreen. So if you live locally, um, we'll be able to give you some contact information. But Noreen, I'm gonna um, turn it over to you to talk about the art of charcuterie and what we're gonna do tonight. So thank you. Thank you everyone for the introduction. Um, I just wanna say thank you to Brown University for giving me this opportunity to be a part of our alumni event. I'm so happy to be a part of it. Um, so like Robin said, I started this company about a couple of months ago during the pandemic. Um, I really had this idea for a really long time. I didn't have the time to do it. And like many of us during the pandemic, um, some of our dreams came true. We started new businesses, new ventures, and this was one of mine. So I grew up in a really big Armenian family and, you know, every weekend we got together and whenever we got together, there was food. And so when I think of food, I think of a lot of cheeses and meats. We have that in every single culture. And, you know, whether we're getting together now on Zoom, hopefully later on together, bigger parties, I really think um, having like a big cheese board is a staple in an event. And, you know, it's one way to bring people together to have our memories and um, just to enjoy it. So I'm gonna go through a couple of different tutorials tonight about how to create the perfect cheese board. I'm gonna start off with some fruits and how to cut them and make them look pretty. And then I'm gonna go into cheeses and then some meats. And then I'm gonna showcase um, a s'mores board. I know charcuterie is sometimes better for adults, but you know, the summer is coming. Some of us have kids, grandkids, so it's something for them to enjoy as well. So um, if you have, the items and you want to follow along that's great if you don't just watch it's pretty simple you guys can do it later on too <laughs> so here we have our kiwi we're going to make a really pretty flower out of it and then set it aside once we assemble the board so you want to take your kiwi a really small knife like this kind of sharp and cut in a zigzag pattern so i cut this way cut the opposite way and I'll bring it up to the screen to show you guys. So you can see that. And you wanna do that all around, starting in the middle of the kiwi and kind of go through the center too, because then at the end, it's just going to come right apart. And mind you, I am not wearing gloves just so I could show you guys how everything's done. So we have easy presentation, but I do wanna mention when you are doing this for your guests and for your family, please go ahead and wear some gloves for sanitary purposes. So who loves cheese? Except for me, I literally eat it every day. <laughs> Have a couple people raise their hands. <laughs> okay, so once you have that cut, I just want to show how easy that is. So you do the zigzag patterns as you can see all around. And then you get a really pretty kiwi that you can place on your board. So it adds a lot of nice color. Kiwi is also very, um, very good. So I love putting it on my boards. <laughs> I'm going to set this aside for now. So our next fruit that I wanna show is a strawberry. I mean, you could honestly just place it on your board like this, but I do like to make it pretty. So again, taking a really small knife, 
you have your strawberry here. I like to add the bigger ones when I'm cutting it this way. Um, the, the smaller ones you could just place on the board like itself. So you wanna take your knife and just cut down, but don't go all the way to the top. You wanna to start a little bit from the bottom. I mean, a little bit from the top. So just keep a little bit attached to the stem. And cut down in a vertical line. And then you will see you have the strawberry like this. And then when you place it on your board, you can make it into a pretty flower like, like so. I'm also gonna place this on the side. And then for my cheeses, I am gonna start with my brie. I love brie. You can bake it, you can have it like that. It's really nice. <laughs> so you just have your typical soft ripened brie that you can get at the supermarket. <laughs> Anyone will work. Just be careful you're not getting like the super smooth ones because when you do the brie wheel, you want to make sure that it kind of holds and stays in place. So using a really sharp knife, I like to cut this into 16 pieces. And I have these knife cutting skills from my brother's pizza place when we're cutting pizza all the time. <laughs> so I usually cut this way down. And you want to make sure you get like a really nice cut with this. And then just keep going until you get 16 even pieces. You want to make sure you take your time with this one too, just so they're even. And you want to have smaller pieces because when you're making the brie wheel, it kind of stays better in place and it looks, um, it looks better honestly with the smaller pieces. I do see some familiar faces here. So I hope everyone's doing well. Marie, we have a question from Amy. She's asking, do you eat the brie rind? Yeah, you can eat it. A lot of the cheeses, you can eat the rind too with it. In my business, I'm learning so much about different cheeses. Like literally on Friday nights, I read books about cheese and my friends think I'm crazy, <laughs> but I just love it. I just think like every country has like their cheese and it's just something that's such a staple in a lot of cuisines. And I've traveled a lot in France and Italy, and you know, cheese is a part of their culture a lot. And that's where I learned a lot about charcuterie. So once you have your 16 pieces, I like to use these recycled wooden boards. Hopefully everyone can see that. You probably aren't going to use all 16 pieces because when you're laying the brie wheel out, um, it's going to be bigger in nature. I'll just show you kind of what that means. So you want to take two pieces, kind of lay them on top of each other out like so, and then kind of start layering on in a little circle. So you kind of have to play around with it a little bit, make sure it's even like the circle itself. 
And then for my last piece right here where I started, you wanna take one and just kind of put it right in there to make that entire wheel. And then I kind of adjust as I see necessary. I'll put in one or two more here. But there you have it. You have a little brie wheel. And then I kind of like to make it pretty. So I'll take like a grape or a strawberry sometimes or even some dried fruit. Just place it right in the middle as such. I'm gonna place that aside. And then I love goat cheese. So Trader Joe's has this honey goat cheese that goes so good with everything. You have many great comments in here. Um, oh. Very pretty, lovely. You make it look so easy. How do you do it, Noreen? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just, I mean, I've watched a lot of tutorials. I've practiced a lot in the kitchen myself. I used to do this a lot for my family and friends pre-COVID. And they used to say, you know, you love entertaining. You love putting things together. Why aren't you creating a business with it? And, you know, I bought my vision to life during the pandemic. And I don't know where it'll lead me in the future, but hopefully somewhere big with this. <laughs> There are a lot of good tutorials as well on YouTube for a lot of people to watch if you um if it's going to be easier for you to, to do this later on. Okay. So you have your goat cheese and then Amazon sells this really amazing cheese slicer. It's literally a wire that slices soft cheeses such as goat cheese. Um, I like to use this just because when you do it with a knife, it's not really like a clear cut and it's not really pretty and presentable on your board. And I'll show you kind of what that means when I cut it and when I'm putting it on the board. So you have your goat cheese right here. And when you use the slicer, slice it and then you just kind of separate away. And then if you do get a little bit of cheese on here, I just like to wipe it on like a damn cloth. And goat cheese goes so well with a lot of different types of meats. You know, I like to put it with a little bit of prosciutto and cracker. And then I use a lot of Mike's Hot Honey. I don't know if anyone's heard of Mike's Hot Honey. It's so good. Um, they have a regular hot and then an extra spicy one. Um, that's really good. Noreen, what is this tool called again? A cheese slicer. So if you just go on Amazon and just type in cheese slicer, you'll get wire cheese slicer. Pretty simple. I can even add in a link to into our chat um, after my presentation. Wonderful. I know the world of charcuterie before I was going into this business, like you never think of how big it is, but it's a it's a big community we have out here. It's really friendly. There's people from all around the world that kind of share ideas, tips on how to, how to make your business better and learning from one another. So I love it. Okay, so I'm gonna bring back my board. So I have my brie here. I kind of want to put my um, goat cheese right here. I like to separate out. I'll do like a couple of cheeses here, there, and then the meats in between, and then the additives. Um, in the spaces that I can fill. So I will take my cheese, just kind of layer it on like this. Same one, putting it on top of each other, not too close. And I'll show you guys what I'm kind of doing here. And then, like I said, you do get that like really nice clean cut with that slicer. If you do it with a knife, you'll see that you won't get that nice presentable cut. Okay. And there is our goat cheese. I'm gonna set that aside too. Everyone want to name some of their favorite cheeses in this chat? Mm. 
Tyler Brum, what's your favorite cheese? Goat cheese. Goat cheese all the way, all the way. <laughs> oh my God, the caramelized onion cheddar from Trader Joe's. That is one of my ultimate favorite cheeses. That is so good. And they also have a really good smoked Gouda. So the next thing that I wanted to show you guys, oh, Gorgonzola, I do love a good Gorgonzola. Mm, so good. <laughs> Provolone, yep. So I wanted to show you guys next, I have a, a black pepper Toscano here. This is also from Trader Joe's. I've been eating this cheese for years. Every time I go into Trader Joe's, I grab one, it's really good. They also have a red wine soaked Toscano. Um, this is another tool that I have also from Amazon. It's also a cheese slicer. The other one is better for like soft cheeses. This one is kind of better for the hard cheeses so you can put some weight on it. So when I have a triangle cheese like this one, kind of lay it flat down this way and not standing up because that's gonna be more di difficult to cut. And I just start slicing about like one inches and then I set it aside. The best part about my job is when I make cheese boards and there's cheese left over, I just eat it all. <laughs> yeah, Tyler just said that he needs one of those and I do too. Is there a name <laughs> for that tool too? <laughs> Um, I believe it's also called just a cheese slicer. If you type in cheese slicer into Amazon, there's so many different variations that come in. You'll see these two. There's like the ones that are made for hard cheeses. And then, like I said, the soft cheeses too. That's just the handle. Yeah, it's like an essential. I know, isn't it? I thought I finally had a use. I had this thing called a mouse trap, and it's a, it's a cheese cutter. <laughs> I thought maybe I had a use for it. I've never used it once, but I'm not sure it's the same. So I'm gonna bring back my board and then show you guys kind of how to present this one. So I start off with the end, put it down, standing up. And then I wanna make sure that when I do this to make it pretty, so I'm not gonna stack them on top of each other the way the cheese was. I'm kind of going to do them in alternating diagonals. So take like this. And then you want to continue that until the cheese is done. I should have taken the rind off first. And then I will show you guys kind of what this looks like, but just want to lift it up. I'm going to hold it. It does stand up just like that. So it adds really pretty dimension to the cheese. So as far as cheeses and how to cut them and how to present them, that is what I had. Did anyone have any questions? Sort of like a tree, yeah, it does look like a tree. They do really pretty, there's like so many different types of things people do for like the holidays too, like making their boards look like trees or you know, a pot of gold for St. Patrick's Day. They're really creative. Honestly, I think of it as an art form. I'm taking food and I'm making it really pretty and putting it on a board. Okay, so I'm gonna move on to the meats. So my first tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys how to make a salami rose. So I have like a really small plastic cup. You want to put the rose, the salami in it, just so it kind of stands up and it doesn't move around. And this works best with like a smaller, thinner salami so that you can kind of layer it. And I'll show you guys 
you know, this is the size of my hand, but really small and thin. This is a, um, it has three red pepper chili from Trader Joe's. It's really yummy. So you want to first start off with the center of the rose. And how you're going to do that is you take a piece of the salami and then just roll it kind of just to make it look like this. And then you wanna take the other pieces of salami and start wrapping it around to kind of hold that in place. I wanna make sure everyone can see this as well. Is everyone good on visual? Okay. And then just continue throughout. Kind of keep layering it on. And so I also do want to mention, so when you have an opening, just because it's going to get bigger and bigger, you want to start your next piece of salami kind of on top of that. So it holds that salami um, previously in place. So this is the opening. And I'm just going to take this and layer it on top. So kind of alternating. And then you're just going to do this until you get a pretty fairly big, you know, rosebud looking flower. Where is everyone zooming in from? Are we all local? I know Doreen, this is making me hungry too. I'm about to just eat this. Nice, California, Massachusetts, Minnesota. I'm sorry, I meant to say local in Rhode Island. I'm located in Rhode Island. Cool. So a little bit of um, everyone from different parts. So once you have your rose, you kind of want to just place it in your cup you're gonna see that it's not fully full. And then what you're going to do is you'll see how it's gonna open up, but take some more pieces and start laying it around. I'm not done yet, but you wanna make sure you fill in all the holes so you have like a full rose. So like I said, it's easier to do this with like thinner pieces, just so you can kind of fit them into where the spaces are. Okay. There you have it, folks. You have a little rose. Someone said my salami was too big. What dimension salami do you have? Um, I would probably say it's like uh, three inches, three by three. Okay, and then I just like to take this, kind of place it wherever, you know, I'll put it right next to the goat cheese for now. And if I wanna move it later, I will. <laughs> So next up, I wanted to show you guys how to make a salami river. This you can probably do with all sizes of salami. It doesn't need to be like smaller. You do need toothpicks for this. I like to just start off and separate all of my salamis. So, you want to take, you want to take your round salami, fold it in half, 
then take another one and fold it in half, but put one inside of the other, kind of like so. So you have something like this. And then you fold it this way, fold the other one in the same direction. Then you could take a toothpick and just make sure you put it right through so it captures both sides. And then you can start building your salami river. I'm gonna do a couple more to show you guys what it looks like. So you put one inside of the other, fold it, and then take your toothpick. It's really pretty once you have, like I put it across my board sometimes as like the main center. This is a little bit more difficult to follow. Is everyone able to get it? And then I will do Who is making it? If you want to just say it in the chat, who's making a board with me and who's just watching to learn some techniques? This is probably going to be my dinner tonight. So yeah, this will be available on YouTube later. Someone said I'm making it for dinner, but it's not. And if anyone wants to kind of see the one that I was talking about, I love this brand, Columbus. This is the salami that I have that I'm using. So then, you know, you have, you could probably do three and three on each of your toothpicks and then just kind of assemble them, push them together. And there you go, you have your Salami River. And then back to our board, kind of where to place it. I like to do it maybe in between my cheeses. So put some right here for now. And then someone asks, is Trader Joe's your typical go-to or do you buy from various markets? I actually buy from um, wholesalers like Restaurant Depot and such when I'm doing a lot of bigger orders. Um, there's kind of like an argument in the charcuterie business of do you go direct retail or who, do you go directly to the supplier? So depending on how big or small you are, at first I was buying from local supermarkets, but once my business got a lot bigger, you go directly to the supplier or to bigger restaurant suppliers. So I'm just gonna step away and grab some prosciutto real quick. And the reason why I didn't grab this before and leave it out is because you wanna make sure you put the prosciutto in your fridge and then take it out right when you're serving it. It can get a little mushy. And when you're trying to make a prosciutto ribbon, um, it's a little easier to do this when the prosciutto is cold. Some people actually put it in the freezer for about like a minute or two before doing this. Lisa asked, do you put your crackers and breads on a separate board and I always have a hard time making them look pretty. Um, sometimes if my board is big enough, I literally have a board that's like maybe five feet. I'll put the crackers on it, but if I'm making one and the ones that I sell, I actually um, package the crackers separately just so we have the board like that. So when 
like I said, when you are putting the prosciutto together, make sure that you put it in the refrigerator first or the freezer for about a minute or two. And this can be a little difficult to work with. So make sure that your cutting board is clean. You want to take your prosciutto. And what I like to do is sometimes some people just fold it this way. You kind of get a messy fold that way because prosciutto can be so thin. I like to fold it in half, kind of press it down. And then when you are making a ribbon, you could do so like this alternating and it comes out really pretty. Then you could take it and then just place it on your board. And when you're putting the prosciutto together, um, it will kind of stick together in a way too. So how are we doing on time? We're at six o'clock, but that's okay. You can continue. I think uh, we did have a couple more people join us. Um, okay. But no worries. I think all, we're having a great time. These are great tips. <laughs> And then and then if you want to try something else too, um, aside from prosciutto, you can also use um, jamón serrano, which is from Spain. I see Tyler nodding. Do you, you love that? <laughs> I'm 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 just so so proud of you, Noreen. Oh, thank you, Tyler. This is a great business. I I can't wait. You know to get a couple boards for, for my next, when I have friends over next. But I, oh. I love everything you're doing here. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, Noreen, you're the best. This is awesome. Hi, Melissa, thank you. Of course, keep it up. These are beautiful. And if you guys have Instagram, give me a follow. I'm dreamboardsri. So I did wanna just show you guys kind of what the prosciutto, um, the prosciutto ribbon looks like. Very pretty presentable. And then if you have like a bigger piece of salami too, I have salami here, I have some chorizo, churis, as some people call it. <laughs> so you wanna take it like this. Fold it that way, kind of trying making a little triangle and such. And then you could fold it over and put it directly on your board. And I will show you guys how to do that this way. I like to alternate for color, just really prettier on the board like that. Marie, what's a good ratio of like meats versus cheese? And do you have like soft cheese versus like uh, hard cheese? What are the ratios for that, would you say? Um, I like to put like either, sometimes I put more cheeses versus more meats. But for this one, I have about, um, it's a it's same ratio, three to three. But sometimes people will do three cheeses to two meats. And I like to do either like two soft cheeses and then a hard cheese. Um, and then color too. I mean, some of my cheeses here, I'm, most of them are white, but there's some orange cheeses you could put on there like a cheddar. Um, yeah, so I like to change it around with color, so hard, soft. It's actually personal preference. When I'm making my boards, I'll ask customers what kind of cheeses they like so I can customize to their liking. And so, you kind of have them layered as such that way. So I'm gonna move this. As far as presentation of my meats and how I was able to put everything together, this is pretty much it. I do follow through and kind of add all of my additional things on the board. Now this can be to your liking. 
whatever you want to put on it. But I do find that there's some things that I always put on my board. If I'm putting prosciutto, I like to put like a fig jam or a fig spread on it. Goes really well with it. And I have this one right here. It's a fig butter. Mm. You know, I'll just place it wherever I, I have room. And I'll kind of move around some stuff too if I find that I need to make room. Um, this is my favorite thing to put on a board. Mike's Hot Honey. So good. It goes so well with a lot of different types of meats and cheeses. Um, it's like a little bit of sweet, a little bit of hot. So, you know, I have those small ones that I use for my company. I'll just place it directly on the board. And then going back to our strawberries, when we cut them, we have like a little flower like this. I like to put it next to the goat cheese. And then going back to our kiwi, you see how it's gonna add a, a lot of color to our board, makes it really pretty too. Maybe I'll add one for now. And then, you know, some nuts to also snack on. They're really good. Place it right in the middle. And then I also like to add around my um, goat cheese, a little bit of dried cranberries. Um, there's so many different types of goat cheeses and one of them is being um, a cranberry goat cheese where the cranberry is actually around it. But if I'm doing the honey, I like to just assemble it around it. I like to call these fillers. I'm kind of filling up my board with things that are gonna accompany the meats and cheeses. And then I do love figs and dried apricots. So I don't know if you guys can see, but I have a little bit of room between my brie wheel and my prosciutto. And just to add a pop of color, I'll put in some of these dried apricots. And then I do love dried figs too. I'll add that around the prosciutto. And then I do also really like chocolate covered pretzels. You can also add um, a lot of boards. They have grapes on them. It's a nice pop of color too. And then I have individually wrapped little pieces of chocolate that I like to put on there as well. So these are really great. Like the weather's getting uh, much nicer out. You can make this in the morning. And then if you want to go on a picnic, it's really nice to have too. Something fun to do outside. And there you have it. That is our charcuterie board. So pretty. <laughs> Who's coming over to enjoy some? <laughs> I do also just want to show you guys. Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate everyone tuning in. And again, I um, thank you, Brian University, for allowing me to be a part of this weekend. I do want to show you guys my dessert board. Like I said, this is for the adults, the charcuterie, but some of us have kids, grandkids, nieces, nephews, and we want to have something for them too. You don't even need to have a fire pit for this one. So I added the s'mores recipe, the s'mores dip recipe as well. You could just put it in the um, oven. It's really easy to make. It took about 10 minutes for mine to make. And <laughs> this is um, one of my favorite boards that I have from TJ Maxx, <laughs> but I have graham crackers on here. This is my s'mores zip 
Um, I put marshmallows on here too. We have some small peanut butter cups. Kids love these. Strawberries, you have your chocolate too. And then you have a little bit of bananas. So something nice for the kids to enjoy as well. Awesome, it looks really, really great. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful. I learned, I learned so much, right? Mine doesn't look nearly as nice as you, but I made it. So we're gonna be feasting here later. Yeah, <laughs> feasting and drinking. <laughs> actually, well, Robin, you can share your picture. It, it actually came out really nice. I don't know how to share on here. So that's why I sent it to you. I sent I it to you, Tyler. Right I sent here. it to Tyler. <laughs> this is Robin's board, if you guys can see it. Oh, Robin, how artistic. <laughs> I didn't um I didn't have the right cutter for the for the triangular cheese. I have to look for that. Um so it didn't cut through. And I cheated a little bit. I had a lot of trouble with the meat. So I'm gonna go back and watch that. We'll be sending this um this recording out to everybody who couldn't attend and did attend. So Noreen, we're gonna move on to wine now, but thank you so much. Thank and, you, Noreen. Uh, I know, uh, even though I had fun making this, I think the next party, I'm, uh, I'm going to let somebody else do the work. So, right. so well, fantastic. Before we move so, on, Robin, this is um, Noreen's contact information for anyone okay. who would like it. Um, either take a picture or we'll send that out in our yes. reminder. Right we'll make oh, sure we'll, we'll send it out with the, with the, with the follow-up email.